Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Sochiing with Suntwe. And uh, today we've gone back onto the, the main Facebook page on Suntwe Facebook page and taken it out of the group. And we are alive again to the public. So if you're watching, please uh, give us a like, give us a share, tell us where you uh, drop a comment, tell us where you're watching from. Um, Sochiing with Suntwe is a podcast slash live broadcast that comes to you every Wednesday evening. And uh, we celebrate extraordinary people, but uh, basically it's ordinary people that make extraordinary uh, choices and then lead extraordinary lives because we don't believe that there are any exceptional people by birth, only by choice. So um, by exploring these different perspectives and looking at life from as many different angles as possible, we hope to be able to bring the tools to you to be able to see how you can apply things to your life and how you can... Uh, can uh, benefit and learn and grow with us as we grow from each other. So um, if you just give me a second, I've got to do some shares. If, you, if, you, if you're keen, give us a share as well. And um, I will start uh, getting this uh, show on the road as soon as I can. We just got to get everything going. Oh, look there. That was simple enough. Uh, share. And we're going to share this to the Soshing with Suntue group. Uh, we should share it to my account first. Let's see if it's on here. Yeah, in the meantime, like I said, give us a comment. Let us know where you're from. Bring your friends in. Tag your mates. Let's get as many people involved as possible so we can all share the love and uh, get some good engagement and some comments going and uh, have a bit of fun. Uh, sharing to the group. Uh, there, there, there. There, there. <laughs> This is great. Um, and then I think I need to share to where else. I think that's it. Hmm, cool. So without any further ado, let's get this show on the road. I would like to introduce a good old mate, um, Peter Royston. Peter's one of uh, one of my favorite people that I've met over the years. We met in Victoria Falls in uh, 2017 or 16? Yeah, we met in 2016, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we met in 2016, and uh, um, I always enjoyed his enthusiasm, and just uh, I thought that he would be a great person to have on here since he started some great initiatives of his own and is quite a an online character himself. So, yeah, Peter, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. So, confirm you're now in Malta. Yes, living on the Little Rock, just south of of Mud Island. So, uh, I've been here three years now. Three years, eh? Wow, yeah. that's a long yeah. time. So, so give us a bit of your background. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? What's the? Who are you? Who is Peter Royston? Who, who is Peter Royston? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I grew up obviously in Zimbabwe. I grew up in, in a small town called Karoi. Um, uh -huh. in um, if you didn't know, Karoi means little witch. That's what oh, it does. It? Uh, yeah, that's that's what Karoi means. I had um, no idea. Little witch, yeah. So um, I grew up there on a, on a farm in Kuroi. Um, I went to a primary school called Ridings, Ridings Primary School. And then I went to Loma Gandhi College. Mm -hmm. and, and then we sort of moved around a lot. Um, and then I went to Hillcrest in Watari. And we lived in Nyanga for a while in Troutbeck, um, which is freezing, uh, which is crazy. And Zim is like a completely different um sort of altitude to the rest it's beautiful though it's it's stunning it's stunning and so lived two years there as a teen i i wasn't too excited living there though because there weren't many people my age so it was, mm -hmm. a, bit, it was a bit boring but um i was at, i was at boarding school so i wasn't home that much um and then we moved to harare um where um, i finished off my schooling at spessis college the Not big smoke. from my pre my previous schools because uh, usually when, when someone ends up at special special citizens and what happened? Well, yeah. But I wasn't, um, it was just, we moved around a lot. Um, and then after that, um, I said we were in Harai for a while. Then I went and worked on cruise ships in the States um, okay. as an entertainment host, um, which was an entertainment host. Oh, so very cool. basically facilitating all the games, you know, um, just having fun with the guests. Um, for a time, I worked in the youth department as well, working with the kids. So you can imagine 
25 five-year-olds running around like crazy. It was it was character building to say the least. <laughs> yeah, you're a you're a braver man than me, mate. That 25 five-year-olds is literally probably my worst nightmare. I would actually, I would uh, hide behind, under a rock and just not be able to come out. That is anxiety-inducing if I've ever, if I've ever ever encountered anything. Teachers and anyone who can deal with small kids, I, I yeah, commend exactly. highly. Take your hat off for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, your 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 main thing now, you've you founded Healthy for Life. Can you tell us what that is? So basically, Healthy for Life. Um, I've been a personal trainer and fitness nutrition specialist for for ten years now. Ten years. Uh, and unfortunately, I mean, growing up in Zimbabwe, um, as you would know, you had to do a million things. You know, to, and, it, and it's a bit difficult to specialize in one. You know, you sort of become a, a jack of all trades and a master of none, um, I find. And moving to Malta has given me the opportunity to focus on one thing, um, and that is personal train, uh, training, nutritional coaching. Um, I also work with um, ex do exercise therapy. And so it's given me the opportunity to specialize in what I love doing and what I'm passionate about. Um, and that sort of led me to, to create Healthy for Life. And Healthy for Life is all about creating a community of people, um, of like-minded people striving for a healthy way of life. Um, by introducing small habits, you know, one at a time, sustainable habits that you can maintain and continue. You know, there's no point going on a diet for two weeks and lose a lot of weight, and we've all done it. I mean, not, not that I've been trying to lose weight, but I've had other goals. You know, we're all different, we all have our certain goals. Um, but, you know, we all do these fads or these diets or these, you know, so I wanted to come up with something that is sustainable that you can continue even after the program is finished. You, you don't just get the results, you get an education of what a healthy life means and you still enjoy the good things in life, but you are aware of what you're eating, you're aware of what you're doing with your body. Um, and I think that is super important because we're all bound to fall off the wagon you know, at some point, not even with our health in, in life, we, we all fall off the bandwagon. It's, it's what we do, but we get up and we dust our knees off and we keep going. Um, and it's, it's being equipped with the tools to know how to get up and keep going, you know? So that's the sort of, that's the drive of healthy for life. It's, it's the goal to equip people um, with those healthy habits to sustain a healthy life. So it's more of a lifestyle shift than a, than a personal training type of thing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think that's important. Um, I know from my own personal experience that 99% uh, of my uh, health life development was first mental development before anything else. Yeah. And yeah. and even so, even still, I mean, I, I fall off the wagon regularly. I, I if for, <laughs> I'm currently off the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm also one of those extreme individuals that tends to fall off the wagon quite hard and then get on the wagon quite extremely hard again and then yeah. fall off the wagon hard maintaining a sort of a, a nice even keel is not my strongest right. point at all but but knowing that is half the half the thing because then you know that even when you fall off the wagon that you have that mindset that i'm going to get back on yeah, yeah. as long as you stay true to that you know you you stay in good uh, good ground so tell me a little bit about how you got to the point of founding Healthy for Life. Where where did it all begin? Where where did it start? Um, I mean, to to be honest, it started you know a, a very long time ago. Um, I grew up um, in a sort of military style um, upbringing, um, boarding school, and when I was born, I had a rare condition called. Um, well, basically, the, the condition was that you suffer geletresia, was the, the, um, the medical term for the procedure I underwent. Basically, what it means is my esophagus wasn't joined. So it just sort of came down and ended. And then the bottom part of my esophagus was joined to my stomach wall. So basically, anything I ate would just go into my lungs and into free space. So I couldn't take anything in through my mouth as a baby. Oh, wow. For a very long time and obviously and um, so i was premature um it was touch and go i mean the doctors are surprised that i made it to my 13th birthday and then you know it was sort of one of those things where it was you know miraculous that i was able to pull through it and and survive it 
but obviously um it didn't you know i didn't make it through without having a few handicaps and a few you know and and so sort of i grew up always um sort of head and shoulders smaller than everybody else um sort of overlooked and there was always that sort of um trying to get into sports teams as you would imagine in zimbabwe is very competitive the you know the sporting scene um and i had a passion for sports and i loved it but you know you always get overlooked and so it was this constant sort of i remember once trying to misbehave so i would get beaten because one of the teachers that actually said to me you know i don't want to beat you because i'll break you and i would get so angry and so frustrated because i was being overlooked because of my size and mm. you know, so i would look for opportunities to to get beaten or get you know because then it would make me feel um you know part of everybody else as dysfunctional as that sounds and i, so I get I, it i totally get it though so so i always grew up with that sort of um as you would imagine as a teenager as quite an angry teenager um you know sort of just growing up being bullied being picked on um and so through all of that i chose not to let that anger and that the hurt and the pain and everything i felt make me into you know a resentful angry person before you continue with that because that's gold i just want to go back to saying you you couldn't take in any um food as a child were you fed through a gastric tube or how exactly. so um so i had to have a gastric tube and because what they did the procedure that they did is they stretched the esophagus so they cut the part that was joined to my stomach wall they stretched it and stitched it together and so basically obviously the, the esophagus is stretched out so it's not as thick as as mm. you know the average um esophagus so even to this day i still when i'm eating i i finish last all the time because i chew i'm in a habit of chewing my food um to the point where it's you know really really digested before it even goes into my stomach because mm. You know, I still struggle with like dry foods and things like that um, to this day. Um, and in fact, funny story, my parents, I, at the moment I came to the world, I was giving them gray hairs. When I was eight, we used to play marbles. I don't know if you ever played marbles before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I thought I was, I was reasonably good at marbles. I was quite the, the marble tycoon. And uh, we'd been playing marbles and I just won a whole lot. And I was sitting in class. And I was, don't ask me why, but I was sucking, I was sucking the marble. And uh, you can see where this is going. Someone walked past me, slapped me on the back and the marble went, whoop, and it went straight down. And I'm like, flip, what am I going to, what am I going to do now? Okay. And my parents were away on holiday. I was staying with my grand. Luckily, my airway wasn't constricted. But then I thought that if I go and drink water, it'll push it down. The problem is it was lodged. So I drank water. And the little bit of air that I had was now blocked. So mm. I'm in the bathroom by myself, literally choking on water. I don't ask me how I thought of doing this, but I did a handstand <laughs> in the bathroom and opened my mouth and let the water drain out of my mouth. Jeez. And it came out and I was eventually able to breathe again. I wouldn't advise trying that at home as a <laughs> remedy for choking. I'm not even sure how it worked for me, um, but it did. And um, basically, I went 10 days eating a liquid diet until my parents came home, came home. And I'm like, look, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. And they started freaking out. Obviously, I started getting a chest infection because this, this thing stuck in my chest. And the next day, I was in surgery. It took, it was supposed to take half an hour. It took one hour and 45 minutes and they were still not able to get this thing out. I'm telling you, when I came out of surgery, I was black and blue. They must have been beating me against the wall, shaking me upside down. They couldn't get this thing out. And they were just about to reopen me where, where they operated as when I was a baby. And <coughs> one, of the, one of the doctors came up with an idea to stick a catheter down my throat. And again, don't try this at home. <laughs> super glue down the catheter and it then stuck to the marble and they pulled it out with the marble stuck to the catheter. My, my mom still has the marble with the glue stuck on it. I kid you That's not. That's unreal. That is unbelievable. Uh, so so uh, I was constantly giving my parents uh, gray hairs. Um, so basically, obviously, um, you can imagine I was a problem child from the, from the beginning. <laughs> 
That's that's incredible. That glue thing is just that's blown my mind. All right, I derailed you though. So carry on. What were you saying about um, where were we? Um, that's a good question. We were talking <laughs> about basically, you know, just saying how I chose not to let that anger right, and there we go to to get me down. You know, because I was I was a very angry teenager. Um, I I hated life. I hated the people around me. I, you know, because it just built up and built up and built up, you know, and I was faced with a decision. And I think, you know, we're all faced with that decision. You can either wallow around in that resentment and that self pity and that anger, mm -hmm. or you can decide to, to change and, you know, focus on, on being true to yourself. And, you know, it, obviously it took a lot of um, counseling, a lot of tough decisions. Um, I, I thank God for my faith as well, um, because that also helped me to to sort of deal with a lot of the things and the anger and the resentment that I had, um, to to get to a place where all I was passionate about is finding people, and we're all we all go through situations where you talk to someone long enough, and you will hear that they are dealing with stuff in their lives, you know. And unfortunately, I don't think we take the time to talk to people long enough to find that stuff out, you know. Mm -hmm. But people are hurting. People are, have, you know, we've all been through something. And so I sort of just found it a passion for listening and then helping people to get out of those places and achieve the goals that they may have set, you know, 15, 20 years ago and gave up on. You know, there's nothing that makes me more passionate then finding someone who's given up on their dreams and picking them up and saying, listen, let's make this happen. Let's get those goals. Let's uh, work through this and, and make it happen. And fitness and nutrition gives me a tool to do that. Um, so I'm passionate, you know, whether it be just talking to someone and motivating them. I'm passionate about helping people get out of their place of hurt and resentment and their place of failure and you know, striving towards a success. But obviously, so that's my passion, but health and fitness has given me a specific tool to help people do that. And um, through getting their eating right, getting their exercise right, getting their mindset, as you said, very important, getting their mindset in the right place. So it's really just uh, allowed me to, and given me a tool to help people um, to sort of get out of their failure and move towards success in their lives. But I want to know how you took that anger and changed it. I mean, because that's that's something that I think um, there's a there's a there's a podcast I listen to a lot called Impact Theory by a guy called Tom Bilyeu. and um, this might be might be relevant, might not be, but he was talking about when it comes to achieving goals, it's eighty percent about the joy and twenty percent about the dark side. And if you can harness that dark side and use that anger positively. There are moments in life where the joy and the happiness and the positive rewards are not enough to get you through the hard times of that yeah. goal or the hard times of that struggle. But then you need to dip into the 20% dark side and bring out the, he calls it the, he calls it the, something like the, the Batman section. Because if you yeah. look at that, Batman is driven by the anger for his parents' death. Yeah. yeah. So the darkness drives Batman more than, uh, more than the good side. But, you know, so how did you, what did you do with that anger? How did you move it? How did you channel it? What? Give us a bit more about that. Um, I think one of the biggest turning points was when a mentor of mine, and in fact, he, he unfortunately passed away last week. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, a mentor of mine sort of stood me in the gap and he said to me, um, you know, we've been, I've been dealing with some issues and, and, you know, sort of coming out with these certain you know, these issues and I'm talking about them. And there were two things he did. The first thing he told me to do, and it was the, probably the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. And it's sad, but it was, I was quivering and shaking. He said to me, you need to go to your dad. You need to tell him you forgive him and that you love him. And I, I promise you, when they say silence is deafening, those words fell on me like a ton of bricks. And, you know, parents parent on what they know. Mm. They, they cannot parent on, on something that they have not, 
you know, heard or they do not know. They parent on what they know and they, what they know is what their parents showed them and their life experiences, you know? So, um, growing up, I wasn't the most studious person. So, you know, there were some, some issues with, with my parents and being in boarding school and, and then, you know, it built up a sort of, um, stigma towards my dad. Um, and going up to him and telling him I forgive him and telling him I love him was one, the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but two, the biggest breakthrough I've ever had in my life. Mm. Because when you go to the source and the root of something and you hack it out, it makes a difference. It changes the fruit. So often, you know, we, we want to, we're producing oranges and we think if we just pick all the oranges that lemons are going to grow. I don't know why I went that way because it's usually the other way around. Lemons. <laughs> <laughs> Man, maybe I have a sour tooth. <laughs> but you know, we too often try and pick the fruit off and we don't go to the root. So that was one of the main things is, is going to the root cause and dealing with it. And then the other thing he did, he faced me with a very tough question. And I think very few of us ever asked this question. And he said to me, Peter, do you love yourself? Mm. Do you, do you love the person that you are? And, you know, I think if every person did a bit of digging and, and really answered that question, you know, what is your self talk like? Mm. What are the things you say about yourself? You know, what, what are you saying to you? And, you know, so often it, and it slips out in the smallest things, you know, you mess up and you like, I'm such an idiot. You know, I'm so, you know, and, and our self talk is just, it plays over and over, over and over and over again. Mm. And that question really forced me to do some introspection and have a look at how I felt about me, you know, and, and what I was saying about me. Um, yeah, it's one of those, um, it's, the most important thing is what you think about yourself when no one else is around. How do you feel yeah. about yourself when there's no one to impress, no one to talk to, no one to validate you? When you're just there in silence, what do you truly yeah. think about yourself and who do you think you are? And that's uh, that's that was a big moment for me as well. Sitting, sitting in silence, all by myself, saying, "Is it who is it that that that, that dislikes me? Is it actually me, or is it the people out there?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, once you answer that question, it doesn't matter what kind of rubbish the people around you throw at you. You know, because you are certain and and steadfast in who you believe you are, what you believe you want, and how you see yourself. You know, mm. when, when you've got that set and that foundation, you know, on, on solid ground, it doesn't matter, you know, what people say. It doesn't matter what the environment says. You know, you can achieve whatever you put your mind to and whatever you set your heart on because you believe it, you know. And, and I truly believe that. I truly believe that when you've got that first part down, you know, it's, it's definitely the best place to start. So define for me in your in your own words what self love is because I I have a sort of an idea of what I think self love is and how I I mean I've written about it a few times so anyone who follows my posts will have an idea of uh, of my version of it but give me your version because it's often mistaken for um, uh, arrogance or vanity or or any of those uh, superfluous type of uh, negative um, virtues so to speak. And obviously, it's 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 definitely not that. So let me hear what you think, what your what your version of self love actually is. I mean, um, I for me, because I think there's two things that that conflict, and, and you just mentioned it now. You know, when you talk about vanity and all of these things, I think when when we start thinking about that, we've mistaken lust for love, mm -hmm. um, and and lust see, seeks to gain self, you know, at the expense of others, whereas love and seeks to to help others at the expense of of self um, and obviously when i say at expense of self um, basically you are doing some introspection so when we're talking love it's about not the outward things that we we see it's not about how you look or you know how you put yourself across and arrogance if, if you're being arrogant you're not being loving to yourself um, so I believe that love, self-love is one, believing who you are, 
because I think we all have we all have that sort of inner desire in our hearts to to go out and do big things. I think we're we're born with it. I think we 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 have that desire to to do good things. Um, and I think at the core of it, you know, unfortunately, as we grow up, the environment around us sort of um, disintegrates that vision that we have. You know, I think we can go back to when we were kids. You know, when you're kids, fear is non-existent. You know, you you jump off the bed and, and you believe someone when they say you're going to catch you, you know. But the doubt comes in when people say they're not. So self-love is, is staying true to that to that bravery that you have inside of you, you know, staying true to that uh, belief that, you know, you can go out and do big things. You can change people's lives. You can be something. You can offer something. You know, I, I think, unfortunately, the, you know, older we get and the harsher the environment we live in, the less we feel like we have something to offer. Mm. And I think believing that we have something to offer, believing that we are good enough, you know, that we don't have to try and be something else, that we are born the way we are, where we are for the reason, you know, that surrounds us. So we're always trying to go look on the other side, oh, the grass is greener, they, they look better, or they, they're more intelligent, or they're more organized, or they're, you know, we all have our specific strengths and weaknesses. And I think self-love is identifying with those strengths and weaknesses and embracing them and allowing those to let us grow and not the environment around us. So basically it's, it's in a, in a fewer words, it's very in line with yeah. the type of thing that I, um, that I believe in. I believe in uh, self-love is discipline and responsibility. Yeah. So yeah. responsibility and the fact that you take responsibility for the circumstances in your life and you choose not to be a victim. So I think that's, that's, that's what you ended off with, that sort of thing. And the discipline side of things is to, to know what's good for you yeah. and to, 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 to give yourself what you know is good for you like you would a child where yeah. you, you know, self-love isn't indulgent. It's quite exactly. the opposite. It's often sacrificial, even on yourself, because you have to be disciplined yeah. and, and sacrifice things for the greater good of what you're trying to achieve in your own being. Exactly. So I think the responsibility and the discipline are the, are the two major things that I, I view as self-love. Ah, that's, that's brilliant. And in fact, mentioning that, it's self-governance. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, when, when you refuse to govern yourself, outside environment will govern, you know? And um, if you can't bring yourself under discipline and under, so for instance, I'll use an example um, in health and fitness. If you don't have the discipline when it comes to your diet and nutrition, unfortunately, you know, if you go in a certain direction, outside forces are going to force you, like diabetes, like all of these things that, that you know, come into play when you live a life of uh, an unhealthy lifestyle. You know, external forces end up coming and governing your decisions. You know, so we're always given that opportunity of self-governance. Um, and I think uh, self-love shows, you know, that, as you said, discipline, being able to make that choice yourself um, and making the hard decisions yourself. Absolutely. So that's cool. <laughs> so, so we've got a couple of questions I just want to address now, just so that people don't think I'm ignoring them. Yeah. Um, the first one is a comment from Sham. Uh, she says, diet is the hardest part of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Any tips on how to eat better without getting bored of the same food? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, and in fact, you know, diet, and I hate the word diet, um, but I think being aware of what you're eating is the most important thing. So I'm going to give you a few tips right now. Um, and if you've got a paper and pen, write it down. And um, that will just help you when you're eating. Um, and the three principles. One is meal timing. One is meal portions. And one is uh, macronutrients. So meal balance. Okay. Now, when you understand these two things, you can be as creative as you want with the meals that you produce. And uh, in fact, you know, if you, if you get in touch, I can swing you. If they drop you your email, I can uh, drop them some recipes uh, from the program that um, 
I've just uh, put together. It's got over 135 recipes of you know variety of different meals. So if you want, um, you know, drop me an email. And I can send you know whoever would like a free you know three days worth of recipes. Maybe um, what we should do is uh, we'll drop your email in the comments. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And then they can email you directly. Exactly. So you know, just to, for a bit of variety. But those two things. So meal timing. Um, we should always be trying to eat um, between two and four hours, every two and four hours. Now, so that's your timing. And the reason for that is your metabolism and your blood sugar. Um, so you want to speed up your metabolism and you want to stabilize your blood sugar. The second principle, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it can get quite in depth. It'll take ages. Um, so meal timing, meal portions. Obviously, it's very important and living in Malta, it's unbelievable. The portion sizes are ridiculous. Enough to feed a small army will be on your plate. Um, but when it comes to meal, uh, meal portions, men, so we're looking at proteins, fats, and carbs. Those are your macronutrients. So every time you eat, you want to have a protein, a fat, and a carb. Okay? Um, and the, the way that you sort of divide those up, proteins, ladies, you want a palm. Okay? Uh, carbs, you want, ladies, you want a fist. And fat, you want a thumb. So like a tablespoon of olive oil or whatever it is. Uh, men, it's two palms, proteins, two fists. Always get way with the camera. Two fists, uh, protein, uh, carbs, and the same fat, one thumb. So meal timing, meal portions, and macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs in every meal. So that's a very, very quick tip um, when it comes to nutrition. Um, and I'll, if you want, my email will be there. Drop me an email. I'll send you some recipes to get you set up um, and answer any more details, you know, questions in more detail. Um, obviously, it's quite an in-depth um uh, sort of uh, topic and developing the healthy habits, you know, sort of takes a bit of time. So drop me an email and I can answer more questions on that. I think it's also important just to add that uh, when it comes to diet, again, using the word diet as not as in going on a diet, but your diet yeah. as in what you eat. Exactly. I think it's very important to, to be, uh, to make sure you understand that it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because all of that will change depending on what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying yeah. to do and what, what your goals are. So, so um, those, those, and then good point, those measurements I gave you is for an average person that's um, just trying to maintain and, you know, sort of lose a little bit of weight. If you're an athlete, if you have more weight to lose, you know, it changes. So it depends on what walk of life you're on, what your goals are. Um, it's always different. Um, Andy Borg is saying, how many times a day should we eat and is heating food in the microwave healthy? Andy, um, basically, so if you, if you look at eating every three to uh, two to four hours, you're roughly going to be having five meals a day. But this is very important now that if you're going to be eating five meals a day, you are taking note of the portion sizes and the quality of what's in each plate. Uh, because if you're eating donuts five times a day, <laughs> you are going to look like a donut. Um, because, you know, obviously you need to watch what you're putting in in your plate. So those proteins, fats, and carbs are very important. And um, so the quality is, is very important. Um, so, and it also goes according to your lifestyle. You know, there's no point in me telling you you need to eat five meals a day, but it's not attainable in your in your place of work or wherever you are. The best thing to do is start small wherever you are. So if, for instance, you're only having dinner, and it's, it's very common, people, especially here in Europe, I find people are so hectic all the time, um, that you know they get up and they just get dressed and go to work. And they'll have a coffee and, and off they go, and then they get home and they eat a huge plate for dinner. Um, you know, so if, if that's sort of your habit, maybe just start by introducing a breakfast. You know, have something small in the morning. So you're introducing small habits. You know, ideally, you're eating five times a day with the right portion sizes and the right you know, meals. But if you're far away from that, there's no point in trying to achieve that if it's just going to derail you. You know, you want to introduce small, healthy habits one at a time that you can maintain. So just start by having, you know, um, some scrambled egg and a bit of avo for breakfast um, or, you know, a handful of almonds and, a, and an apple. You know, it's better than having nothing. So start by just introducing small habits um, and then work your way up. 
regarding the microwave, um, we don't have a microwave at home. Um, obviously, it is more convenient. And, and look, at the end of the day, <clears throat> if having a microwave is going to help you eat consistently and it's going to help you to, you know, if you have a problem preparing food and you're not eating, I would rather you heat something up in the microwave and eat it. It's better than to eat something than not have anything at all. So if, you know, you're in that situation where it's be all and end all and that's what you have, then I'm not going to say, you know, stare at the microwave and don't use it because it's bad for you and you go hungry, you know, use it, eat. But ideally you don't want to because the microwave nukes your food and sort of kills a lot of the nutrients that would have been in there. Um, but to be fair, if you're eating foods that you can just quickly heat up in the microwave, there weren't many nutrients in there to begin with. Um, so ideally you don't use the microwave, um, but don't let that, you know, put you in a situation where you're not eating at all. Um, because that's, that's not productive. Um, so look at your, your situation and make a, a wise decision. If you can go without it, I would say go without it. Um, but do not eat because, you know, it's not good for you. Okay. So the next question I've got here, I'm going, I'm going to just say something on it before you do. Yeah. Uh, it's from Nicola Burt. She says, how do you get yourself through the process of cravings? Anyone else get cranky when your body starts craving? And basically that's about blood sugar management yeah, at the end exactly. of the day. So if you're, yeah. if you're getting dips in blood sugar, you're going to be craving. And that's, where, that's why when you have a blood sugar dip, your first instance is to crave something high sugar, yeah. chocolate, cake, whatever. You're not, yeah. You never crave, you, you never crave a, a string beans. It's just not something yeah. that happens because exactly. it's not a high calorie food. So managing your blood sugar is all about what you're trying to achieve again. What are you doing? What is your plan? What's the, the <laughs> this is a, yeah, that, that there's a lot of answers to that that can be controversial because it's again, what is your what kind of diet are you are you eating? Yeah. If you're eating a high high sugar type diet, you're gonna have more cravings and your blood sugar is gonna be all over the place, blah 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 blah. But anyway, you know, I'll let you continue with that. Um so when it comes to as Paul said, it's all about blood sugar. And um just a, a fun fact for the average adult that is not generally active. The, the maximum amount of sugar in a day that your bloodstream can take before it starts turning the glucose into fat is 25 grams. So that's the, the maximum amount. And obviously, as we've been saying, if you're active, if you know, you, you're an athlete or, or things like this, it, that's going to change. Um, but basically, you want to try and keep that blood sugar level. You don't want it to spike. You don't want it to drop. And that's where eating, you know, sort of smaller meals throughout the day that you can snack on because I can, I, I find one of the biggest things that people tell me now is I'm too busy. I'm too busy to eat. I'm too busy to do this. I'm too busy to prepare food. So you want to prepare small snacks that you can have on the go, you know, that are balanced with your protein, your fat, and your carbs. Now, when you have that balance and you're eating um, every three, uh, two to four hours, um, you're going to keep that blood sugar balanced it's when you start skipping meals that the blood sugar drops and that's why the next meal you have you want to have a mountain because you're starving and you just want to eat whatever you can find and um, so obviously that's going to be detrimental because more often than not you're going to take your 25 grams for your day in one sitting and um, so you want to try and balance it out and obviously again you know it depends what you're doing if, if you're into sports and into all these things because that we can get very technical or we can talk about complex carbs and simple carbs and all of these you know processes and things that have an effect but basically what you want to try and do is balance your blood sugar and when you do that you curb cravings um so um again you know give me an email i'll give you some recipes for some amazing little energy balls that you can make make a big batch of them and take them with you you know so when you when you get that you know, hour when you're supposed to eat, you grab an energy ball, it's sweet, but it's just the right amount of sweet and it just hits the spot just right. So, um, but yeah, in a nutshell, balancing your blood sugar. It's quite a, it's quite a big one though, because we could, we could talk for hours on glycemic index, glycemic load, how to balance that, how to use protein to bring down the glycemic index of a high yeah. carb thing. It's that, I think <laughs> 
This is a whole, this is a vast, vast, vast topic that requires yeah. a lot of research on the part of the questioner yeah. or otherwise an appointment that uh, can last a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't be able to cover it all here, I'm afraid. No. No. Um, we got a nice comment here from Abby Dent saying, this live chat is really hitting home. I just want to say, first, you're a true inspiration for me at this particular time in my life. I'm going through one of those shifts that have been a few years in the making. Learning to maintain a healthy life and be being aware, being very aware of what I'm eating has been a new goal. But as a vegetarian, I'm struggling to find a good balance. Any suggestions? Quite active, and I'm a grazer eating around five times a day. Uh, I mean, look, coming from coming from Zimbabwe, um, I grew up in an almost carnivorous diet, <laughs> uh, and uh, obviously, you know, sort of coming to to Malta and being in Europe, um, there's a much bigger awareness of vegetarians and, and vegan and and all these different ways of eating. So, you know, it's it's taking a bit of research because very it's it's. Uh, <laughs> It's um, it's very easy to decide I'm going to go vegan or I'm going to go vegetarian, and then you you start getting nutritional deficiencies, and you know you've got to look at a vegetarian diet and really look at that balance of the proteins, fats, and carbs, um, and there are loads of of vegetarian protein options um, that you can look at. You know things like. Uh, barley, which is a carb, but it's got a, a high uh, protein protein content as well. You've got hemp seeds. You've got. Um, <clears throat> I try and stay away from things like soya because of the process that it's gone through to become what it is. And I know a lot a lot of vegetarians and, and people might have something to say about that. And a lot of vegetarians, that's their fallback. Is soya. soya needs to be condemned for the phytoestrogens. Yeah. It's not good for men. Stay away from it. It's not good at all. And so many people, unfortunately, you know, choose soya as their, you know, you have here, you have uh, tempeh, tempeh, which is like, they make burgers out of tempeh. And um, I would advise you to try and stay away from those things and look to things that are, are more natural um, and more in their natural form. So you've got things like, um, as I said, hemp seeds, barley, lentils, um, all these, these whole grains have got quite uh, higher levels of protein than your other carbs. So those are the things that you want to look at eating. Um, your black beans, sugar beans, uh, butter beans, all of these things. <laughs> um, obviously, a lot of those things, depending on, on how your gut um, <laughs> uh, sort of reacts to those things, you know, you could uh, put the people around you in a bit of danger. But... Um, <laughs> But uh, those are your sources of protein that you want to look for. And you want to make sure that they are in your diet. You want to make sure that you're having them, you know, um, to make up for, I don't know if, how strict you are. Eggs are a brilliant one. Um, so, but uh, vegetarian, I'm not sure. It depends how strict because some vegetarians will eat egg and cheese. Some don't. Um, so it just depends how, how strict you are. Um, but there's, you've got cheese, which is quite high in protein. Uh, and you've got eggs, which is quite high in protein. Um, Brussels sprouts, believe it or not, not uh, not many people's favorite, but they are also quite high in protein. Spinach, these things, um, they've got iron. They've got the things that you're missing out on in meat. They've got in them iron, your B12 um, and your B6s. So you want to make sure that you're getting that from your diet. So spinach, um, uh, Zimbabwe, you would have rape, um, which is a good one as well. So just to add something there because i get asked a lot as well like for dietary tips and there's one simple 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 thing that i tell everybody that if they just did that it would change everything and right now i'm a hypocrite because i'm not on the wagon i'm off the wagon i'm aware but when i'm on the wagon i mean that's that's the main thing that's the yeah when i'm on the wagon the rule is basically if it comes from a plant eat it if it's made in a plant don't touch it but that doesn't obviously with a disclaimer that I still eat meat. <laughs> so basically all that means is if it's made in a factory, stay the fuck away from it. Yeah. If, it, if, yeah. it grows, if it grows out the ground and you can pick it, chow it. And uh, so when you're yeah. shopping in the supermarket, stick to the first two aisles where all the fridges yeah. are. 
and yeah. uh, eat all the fresh fruit, the veg, all of that sort of thing. Stay away from sugar. Stay away from anything that's in a cardboard box, anything that's on the shelves that uh, non-perishable, all that extra shitty stuff that's made in a factory. Just get rid of it, and you'll be amazed. You can't I, – I don't believe anyone can get bored of the variety of fruits, vegetables, and meats that are that are available. Sugar, yeah. sugar is the white death. And um, personally, I have a, I don't eat wheat, and I and uh, when I'm on the wagon, I stay away from dairy as well. Yeah. Um, the only dairy I don't stay away from is butter, but yeah. I don't I don't touch cheese and I don't touch any milk products when I'm on the wagon. Right yeah. now, I'm off the wagon, so I'm eating chocolate and I eat cheese at the moment. Yeah. But otherwise, cheese, butter, and uh, chocolate. Uh, I don't. I don't consume milk. Like I don't drink milk because that's just crazy. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> the, the, the longer the the ingredients list is, the worse that product is for you. Basically, um, that's what I try and teach people. And but obviously, you know, it's good to reward yourself now and again. Um, it's good to enjoy these good things um every now and again but if if you if those are your goals and and what you're trying to do is stay on that wagon and, and keep to those principles um as paul said you know try and shop on the outskirts of the of the shop that's where all the fresh stuff is um, and then obviously you know there's the section with all the beans the dry beans and try and buy the dry beans not the, the ones in the tin so get get the beans that you have to soak overnight i know it's a pain preparing but if you plan ahead Soak it, you know, it's more in its natural natural form. You're going to get more nutrients from it, and it's just going to be better for you. So if you can, plan ahead. And that, in fact, that is probably one of the biggest things to anyone who is trying to um, attain their goals in nutrition and fitness preparation. Plan ahead. Because the thing is, if it's there, you'll eat it. If it's not, you'll eat something else. You know, so plan ahead. That is that will set you up for success. Make sure you plan ahead, and then work the plan. So, um, just so everybody can know, we're about ten minutes left, thirteen minutes left. So, if you've got questions, you've got anything you want to say, anything you want to add, please start dropping them in now because we're going to start winding this whole thing down, and um, coming towards the end because I don't want it to go too long. We're not at a we're not at a hard one hour cutoff, but. Um, I don't want to drag you guys all the way through to tomorrow, and this is <laughs> stuff that I I can uh, <laughs> I can talk about this for days because for sure. for uh, sure. nutrition and health is a very big and very uh, very big interest of mine and a topic that I like a lot. Yeah. Um, but what I think would be great as well is that um, we're all members. If you're not members of the Social with Suntwe group, then jump in there because. Um, we can put up a thread specifically on this topic, and we can chat about it. And I'm yeah. sure you've got a you've got a Facebook group, don't you? Healthy for life. Yes, healthy for life, Malta. That's the page, right? That's the page. That's the page. The group is uh, healthy for life community. Yeah. So there's healthy for life community. Is there a is there a prerequisite for being in that group, or can anyone join? Uh, anyone, anyone can join it. All right, so there's there's the Healthy for Life uh, community group, which um, you can also chuck your 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 info into that and like like and subscribe to his page and follow his page, and I'm sure you'll you'll benefit from that as much as you yeah. as much as you need to. So now I'm just going to ask you a couple of like fun sort of questions, just general questions, just to wind things down while people are thinking of uh, of any more questions they want. So yeah. your, the first one is, uh, what is your biggest accomplishment? What is my biggest accomplishment? Mm. Um, I and I think I'm gonna get a little philosophical on this one, but I think my biggest accompl accomplishment is what we've spoken about before: is being able to come from a place of rejection, a place of hurt, a place of um, sort of just negativity and darkness, and turn that around and be a positive influence on myself and the people around me. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's something that I, I sort of, I really stay true to, you know, being a positive influence to the people around me. It's so easy to let life get you down, especially now. I mean, we're in 2020 now. There's probably aliens coming in October. Who knows <laughs> what's going on? But, you know, there's every excuse in the world to be negative, and to be beaten down. And for me, I think my greatest accomplishment is 
being true to myself to stay positive and continue to be an encouragement to the people around me. Amazing. And I think you're nailing it. So uh, <laughs> congratulations. It's an everyday battle. It's an everyday battle. Oh, I know, I know, I know. So for those of you who have been with us many, many, many times before, and those of you who know me, my nickname is Suntwe from the Zambezi, which means hyena in Tonga. Uh, there's a whole long story of why I started being called Suntwe, and there's it's uh, it all stems from Vic Falls and kayaking on the Zambezi and hanging out with Tonga guys and all the rest of it. But um, if you want to know more about that, my website's got a story on it right at the introduction of the Chronicles of Suntwe. But um, so, Peter, if you were an animal, what animal would you identify as? Ooh, good one. What what would I like to be, or <laughs> what, what do you think? I, what animal represents you? What animal represents me? Um, I like. I would like to to say, you know, lion, leopard. But to be honest, to be honest, probably a monkey. A um, monkey. <laughs> Because um, I like to keep things entertaining, um, you know, and I, I like to I like to keep things light and, you know, sort of, um, yeah, a monkey. Yeah, I think that's fitting. I think that works. I like that. <laughs> I, th I think I think the the lion leopard uh, answers are very dull and boring. Yeah, <laughs> I think a monkey. Um, yeah, I can see uh, that. Uh huh. Basically. I like that. Yeah. So yeah. now, uh, tell me, tell, tell me. Sorry, I didn't get the last part. Just because I like to keep life fun, I like to keep it light and and you know. Yeah, it's good. I think monkeys do that. You can sit and watch monkeys for ages and just yeah. laugh at them, and you know, it's yeah. The, you can if you throw a stone at them when they're bugging you, you know, they'll still continue to clown around somewhere else. You know, whoever. And, and, and monkeys like to dance, and I know you like to dance. Yes, yes, I, I, I do enjoy a bit of dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us something about yourself that not many people know. Share us a secret with us. Something about me that not many people know. Um, well, I already shared the Marvel story with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, hmm. Um, this is a tough one because there's so many things going on in my mind that I could tell you. It's uh, it's crazy. Um, you go first. You tell me something about you. Let me warm up on this one. Well, the thing is, like, it's something that I. It's, I, can, I can tell you. I've 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 told this. Uh, I said I I think I told this on the last one as well when. Uh, um on the last broadcast but if you weren't watching then you won't know and not a lot of people know this but i'm trying to make it more and more and more known um the fact that i'm a giant giant wuss like i am a total scaredy cat about pretty much everything okay heights heights scare the shit out of me um everything scares me pretty much and everything has scared me at one point or another i'm not i'm not a brave i'm not what i'd consider a naturally brave person that's my <laughs> dirty that's my dirty little secret no that's i mean and that's that's very true actually i i was gonna share something about fear actually and um, i'll share something a little bit lighter but it's related to fear and um, so i used to work at at the bridge the bungee jumping oh yes you did indeed yeah um and funnily enough that's where i worked but when it came to me jumping off that bridge <laughs> I have been I've never been I think I, I did it three times and that that was enough for me um, and I've never been so afraid in my life and my little secret is that and maybe I don't know maybe you can hear it from my turn of the, my voice that that's the way it would go but I squealed like a scared little girl when I jumped off that bridge <laughs> And it wasn't because my underpants were tight. I was literally screaming for my life. I was petrified. I thought I was going to die. Um, even though every day um, I was, you know, helping marketing the bungee jumping and getting people to jump off the bridge, knowing how terrifying it actually was. Um, so it absolutely terrified me. 
But you're still I, better, you're still better than me, mate. Because when I when I did it, I make brown noise. Do you know what brown noise is? <laughs> From the back. No, brown noise is that high, high, high pitched squeal that only dogs can hear while you shit your pants. <laughs> that's that's not a good noise to make. No, it's a, it's it's a completely silent scream that only dogs can hear while you shit your pants. That's brown noise. <laughs> so whenever you see someone do something and they're going. <laughs> That's, that's, <laughs> happening. that's what's happening. You can see now how it's not common knowledge. Here's Donna Tipler saying, Paul, you could have fooled me. Welcome back, Donna. We always love having you. Thank you for the support. So, yeah, so the, the, <laughs> I, I completely, completely sympathize with you. Jumping off that bridge is, is a shitty thing. It's not, it's not fun in any way whatsoever. So another one. This might be the last question because it's uh, we're sort of winding down now. We've got five minutes left. Uh, what is the question? Uh, what is the question people ask you most often? Um, hmm. I'll have one more after this. After this question, I think I think that would be um, no. I think it's all related. The, the biggest question would be, how do you keep motivated? Mm. How, do you keep, how do you keep your positive outlook on life? I think that's one of the biggest questions. Yeah, true. Um, we, got a, we got a good one from Donna. Peter, what is your advice for us menopausal? Can't believe I'm actually typing that word, woman. Intermittent fasting has helped me a lot. And um, yes, I mean, when it comes to, to menopause, obviously what starts happening is your metabolism starts slowing down. So you've got to look for any and every way to try and speed up that metabolism. So <clears throat> intermittent fasting is, it's great, but the, the one problem that intermittent fasting has is that you'll get results for a while, but your body is very, very intelligent. And what it does is it picks up on patterns and it will actually start having an adverse effect because it will start slowing it slowing down your metabolism to make way for the time that you're not eating um it starts slowing everything down because it needs the energy for when you're not eating so intermittent fasting is great but you've got to keep changing it up don't keep to the same routine all the time because your body will pick up on it um i don't personally um advocate you know my clients to to intermittent fast but I have seen the results that it that, that it um, sort of has, so it has its benefits for sure. Um, I don't think it's entirely sustainable for a long period. Um, so you want to try and find something that's sustainable, but you want to try and increase your metabolism. So um, get moving. You know, if you've got an, an office job, one workout a day, um, three times a week is not going to cut it. You're going to get, you need to get active. So you're going to need to do a workout. You're going to need to get up, walk around, go for walks, use the stairs when you can, don't use the elevator. Um, you know, if, if you have the opportunity to, uh, this might sound crazy, park a little further away so you can walk a little bit, get every opportunity you can to move. That's going to help speed up your metabolism. And then obviously when it comes to nutrition, try and eat as natural as you can, because then it's going to make your body so you can lose weight by eating more because you're eating things that are natural and your body uses and doesn't store. So what that means is all your processed carbs, you want to try and avoid and you want to try and eat foods that your body's going to use. And in so doing, you're making your body work. And so your body works to burn protein. Your body works to, to break things down. So you want to give your body more to do to increase your resting metabolic rate. So just to build on that as well, as I think there's a lot of misconception when it comes to intermittent fasting is that intermittent fasting really is only, in my opinion, again, this is just an opinion, my, in my opinion, is only beneficial if it's, if it's done in ketosis. Yeah. And the reason for that is if you're, if you're having a high carb and, you, and you're burning sugars and using sugars as your, as your main energy source, um, intermittent fasting is going to create low blood sugar, high blood sugar spikes a lot. Yeah. And your insulin response is going to be big when you do finally eat your meal. You have a big meal, your insulin response goes big, and it immediately takes those sugars and stores them as fat. 
Whereas yeah. if you're in ketosis and you're utilizing fat as your primary en energy source, then you will be utilizing the, the fat over a long period of time during your fast and then replenishing your stocks at the end of the day or at the end of your, when you break the fast. Yeah. So it's a little bit more complicated than just yeah. missing meals and having, um, exactly. you know, just skipping hours where you don't eat. You need to know what you're doing when it comes yeah. to intermittent fasting, ketogenesis. All those things are a lot more in depth than can really be spoken about in two and a half minutes on a on a yeah. podcast and i think like ketosis and intermittent fasting i'm a big fan of it i like it but it's it's again it's okay. not going to work it's not going to work if you're not doing if you're not maintaining blood sugar levels at the right yeah. amount and it's all you know any weight loss is about maintaining blood sugar insulin response and calorie yeah. deficit at the end of the day exactly um yeah. Val Chikali wants to know if we can answer Andy Borg's two questions. One of them was, are pork tongues good to eat? I've never eaten a pork tongue, but I love yeah. to eat cow tongue. I love beef tongue. Cow tongue. Cow tongue. Amazing. Um, so I don't know. Have you eaten pork tongue? I, I have not eaten pork tongue. In fact, no, I have. I have. Um, and it's, it's, similar, it's similar consistency to, to cow tongue. I have um, no idea. Um, look, pork, uh, you've got to look at the diet of a pig. And it depends, you know, what, what the pig's being fed. But pigs are omnivores, um, just like we are. Um, so they will eat meat. They will eat uh, anything, really. Um, so personally, you know, I love, you know, a bit of bacon now and then. But I try not to eat it too often. Um, because it's, it's, it's a very inflammatory, um, product. So it causes a lot of inflammation in the body. Um, so I wouldn't eat it often. So I have it now and again, I wouldn't say, you know, don't, don't eat it at all. Um, I work night shifts. Should I eat during my night shift? Absolutely. Treat, if you were working a night shift, treat it like a day. So try and split it up like, like you would a day. Uh, because you're active in that night shift and you you eating the way you you know you would during the day. So absolutely, absolutely. Um, Sarah, Sarah Smith saying this is uh, brilliant. Thanks you guys and Peter. So good to hear from again. Is always entertaining. Hey, it's been ages. My goodness. <laughs> Hi Sarah. Uh, That's longer than than you, Paul. Donna is also saying typing fast is almost time up. Great info. Thank you. Very busy and on my feet a lot at our veterinary surgery. No carbs, no gluten or dairy. Clearly, I don't have a life, but I have whiskey. <laughs> well, <laughs> as far as I know, there's gluten and whiskey, isn't there? There is gluten and whiskey, but the pros is that it's probably the lowest in sugar when it comes yeah, to Yeah, true. Um, yeah, but uh, no, no carbs is a lie because uh, complex carbs are important and complex carbs are yeah. being eaten. Those oh, are vegetables okay. and fruits. Sorry? Carbs are, your body needs carbs. Yeah. yeah, I like personally, I don't eat simple carbs. So I don't eat, obviously, I don't eat bread and that sort of thing because it's one, it's processed, two, it's wheat, and I'm allergic to wheat, like legit allergic to wheat. Yeah. Not, uh, not fatty allergic to wheat. <laughs> I actually die from it. Um, and um, yeah, so complex carbs are very important. Fruit, vegetables, those are complex carbs. That's what carbs are. Yeah. Whole grains is a is a whole other subject that I I like yeah. I'd like to talk about. I can talk about for hours it's as well. An isolated, uh, isolated topic for sure. Because yeah. they take it all night, to be honest. Because then we can go into lectins and leaky gut uh -huh. and all that sort of thing. But that's a whole that's a whole another thing for another yeah. day. Yeah. Um, Peter, it's been a pleasure, yeah. mate. Awesome, Paul. It's it's so good to to chat to you and and chat to a Zimbo man. It's it's so nice. <laughs> To just you know have have a chat and and you know Zimbos must be rare in Malta. Um, a lot of South Africans. Yeah, a lot of South Africans. Um, the odd Zimbo here and there, but uh, not not too common. Um, mm. but uh, quite a few South Africans. South Africans are everywhere. To be fair, oh. yeah. Even South like cruise ships in America, there were loads and loads of South Africans. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, but uh, it's really nice to to chat chat to someone from home. <laughs> yeah and don't be a stranger mate thank you so much for coming on today and taking the time to be with us 
Um, awesome. It's been been great. I've really enjoyed it. To everybody watching, thank you for the support as usual. It's uh, great to have you. Thank you for the engagement. Without your comments and your, your support, this would be nothing. And uh, yeah, we're here every week. Oh, before I go, just so you know, guys, I'll put a post in the group, but I'm tr I'm toying with the, the clocks are about to change next month on the 25th. I won't be able to do the same time because it will mean I have to go broadcast here at 5 p.m., which means uh, that's when I finish work. So it's too early. So if I keep my side 6 p.m., it'll go to your 8 p.m. Is that better? Does that work? Drop comments. Let me know if that's better. Some people say it's better because they have kid time at 7 p.m., dinner time at 7 p.m., and it's a bit much. But yeah, I think we'll move it to 8 p.m. Uh, Central African time for the future going forward, only after the clocks change though, on the 25th of October. So we've still got one or two broadcasts between then. We've got a nice guest next week. Um, so I'll put the poster out for that as soon as I can. And um, yeah, thank you guys for everything and um, feeling the love. And uh, we'll keep this going for as long as you guys want it. So yeah. Thanks, Peter, and we're going to sign off. Or keep it up. It really is fantastic. Love it. And thanks for having me. I hope that it was helpful. Um, but I really appreciate uh, you having me on the show. Yeah, and, it was uh, great. We'll keep in touch for sure. You need to come to Malta. Come get some sunshine. We'll visit for sure. Right. Good night, everybody. Ciao, guys. <laughs>